Well, I've been thinking fast. Um, <laughs> And I'd like to thank uh, both of our speakers for what I certainly find a very stimulating and interesting um, contributions to the, to the conference. Um, uh, my head is just kind of full of lots of ideas that I desperately want to talk to you about uh, later, but just to try and uh, pick some strands out of that. One of the things that struck me, I think, about both of your presentations was um, the extent to which you were describing a situation in which women's room to manoeuvre was becoming more and more circumscribed. And you, and you described it in, in different ways, I think in terms of Rebecca's signal moments, but also I think your analysis of Dr. Spock just drew our attention to the way in which what uh, could be constructed by the women themselves as an acceptable choice, and indeed by those with whom they have to interact as an acceptable choice, was getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And I, I think that's a very telling um, development. And, and certainly my sense is of women in particular and parents in general having less and less secure ground on which they can stand, that there's just, it's just not space um, to do anything other than the one thing. Um, so that motherhood uh, has become more and more circumscribed and more and more laced with the tyranny of the fail of f fear of, of maternal failure that you know just one thing I think Rebecca was suggesting uh, get it wrong once and actually you will never be able to hold up your head as a good mother so that the categorical nature of the imperatives which mothers face um, has become more and more extended. And I think that uh, reflects perhaps the increasingly reductionist nature of expert pronouncements. Uh, it struck me also, uh, listening to Rebecca, how almost anything could become one of those signal moments. And, and it took me back to think about my signal moment when I realized I had finally failed to be, well not finally, my child was 10 days old at the time, and I was about to be discharged um, from hospital after my first baby's birth, um, and discharged by the sister in charge with whom I'd had a few run-ins up to that <laughs> point. And my husband had brought in the baby clothes, which uh, we were actually at the time, we, um, some of you will sympathize with this, we were PhD students at the time, so we didn't have a lot of money and various kind friends had given us baby clothes um, and which we had carefully laundered and my husband brought you know um, the nicest of these rather motley sets of baby clothes into the hospital and the sister in charge held up the clothes uh, the baby girl that I had been brought in which was clearly second hand but very clean held it up and said I always think that one can tell somebody who's going to be a good mother <laughs> B by the fact that she bothers to buy something new to take her baby home from hospital. And actually, of course, in many ways, um, one could stand back from that and intellectualize it, but it seems to me that almost anything can become the point at which mothers judge themselves to have failed, and thank you very much for that um, laying out of, of particular areas. I, I particularly enjoyed your unpacking um, the notion of choice um, and it seemed to me that actually one of the things um, that you pointed to was the way in which um, choice is no longer about deciding to do this or to do that, but choice is ab about adopting or embracing a particular moral status as a good mother. So it's about, um, it, it's, it's not about alternatives, it's about whether you do or whether you don't. And I suppose one of the things that also struck me um, about both of your presentations was, if you like, the death of spontaneity. That there was no place in which uh, women could any longer um, respond in anything which one might describe as an authentic way. I, thought, I was particularly struck by your description of ultrasounds, that actually responses are performances. They're not about, in any sense, uh, um, something that is actually coming spontaneously from the mother, and that seemed to me to be a profound loss, really. It also occurred to me, and I guess this is the final point I want to make, um, is that uh, there are real connections between some of the things you were both describing um, and that literature on the presentation of self. 
that actually what these women are apparently being called upon to do is to offer a presentation of self which will can be interpreted by the professionals certainly but also by themselves as one of adequate and moral mothering and parenting and that leads me on to think about the importance of, of self-evaluation and self-policing around these things. These are not simply extraneous um, forces which are imposed upon women. they are ways in which women, we uh, as women, um, find to uh, interpret our own behaviour um, and make sense of our own world. So thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.